Yeah, hello and welcome to this video which covers round 9 of this year's Tata Steel Tournament. Yeah, what did we have in round 9? We had a couple of draws and um, just one decisive game. Is that a big spoiler? It is a bit of a spoiler. But again, um, you probably know the results anyway. It's a bit of a late video, but um, even though there were a couple of draws, things... Uh, got really, really wacky. So <laughs> let's have a look there. I'm going to kick off with the game Nepomniachi with White against Pentala Hare Krishna. And this game already in the early stages shaped up to be very, very sharp. This looks um, quite uh, modest, but White has some interesting ideas with this move. It's something that I've played myself. E6 played. And now Nipomniachi took on d5. This is a very rare move. White usually plays bishop c4 in this position, or like this, or the move d4. This is, for example, what I played in a game last year. Um, this has a very concrete idea, because Nipo now goes with b4. That's a bit of a shocking move, but it is quite interesting. If black now grabs this pawn, which is probably not all that great, then bishop b2 is giving white very nice compensation. White has a permanent grip on the d4 square, and it's difficult for black to develop because the bishop is so strong. It's very difficult to get this, get this untangled, and something like f6 just looks ugh, ugly. I think Hare Krishna's choice of c4 is stronger. And um, yeah, the time spent suggests that they both have had both know this position. Bishop b2, bishop takes b4. Yeah, he took on b4. Probably, um, yeah, probably okay. It's tough to, again, develop if you don't give up the g7 pawn. So bishop g7, rook g8, and bishop e5. Of course, you also um, could have just gone back to b2. Um, this is um, really one of the weirdest positions <laughs> after a couple of moves that I've seen uh, on the board after such a, a, let's say, relatively conservative opening like the English here. It's really, um, yeah, really non-standard. Um, now knight c6 attacked the bishop on e5, and the bishop retreated to g3. So all of a sudden the bishop switched to that diagonal. Of course on g3 it does have some points, especially it covers the g2 pawn, or let's say, yeah, blocks the rook from attacking it so white prepares his development. This all looks fairly uh, logical in my book. h5, getting this on the road, black will cast along anyway. That's what it looks like. Yeah, now d3 here by Nipomniachi. And this now um, leads to absolutely crazy complications. I think uh, that Hare Krishna is playing it correctly. And I mean, mostly the computer thinks. Because the game now gets so complicated that um, the human, um, the pure human eye is very difficult here to use. And this is what they have to do during the game. So um, bishop f4. Note that uh, white, the white player is not spending any time at all. Yeah, that could mean that he had this prepared or that um, he's maybe a bit frustrated with the tournament's course. Nipomniachi has not won a single game and uh, lost lost one or two, if we look at uh, before round nine. I would have to check that. I think he lost two. Um, so d4 now, Bahari Krishna. Interesting choice, opening everything up. E takes d4, and here it seems to be um, a critical situation. Hare Krishna now does not um, play bishop h3, which is suggested by the computer. This is certainly a move that he looked at. I mean, it, it quite obviously wins the exchange, so it is a candidate. However, what we shouldn't do is um, just like file this away under, okay, black wins in exchange. Because let's just say we get this position. The exchange is nice to have, but note that um, the black king will never be safe in this game, ever. Yeah, It has no pawn shield, while the white pawns here shield the white queen, king quite reliably. 
And also a bishop can be a pretty strong piece in this kind of position. It opens up quickly. For example, let's say black takes on d4 and white plays a move like rook b1 attacking this pawn. This is not just a straight um, exchange up for black. Absolutely not. Still, this is probably what Hare Krishna should have gone for. He played this and this is met by a strong reply because Nepomniachtchi just takes on c4. And the point is that um, black now does not have anything better than to play what he did. He took Check. on e2, queen takes, and now there is um, yeah, a choice between just being permanently worse or yeah, probably be a lot worse, but be a lot worse in a murky position. This is what we can see now using all kinds of analysis tools in the game. It's not such a clear decision. He could have played queen d3, which um, is probably not much fun, as we see here. White is a pawn up, but black has the bishop pair and will not lose immediately. There are some scenarios like this, like rook d8, knight f5, bishop e6, like this, where we have opposite colored bishops. I think here the black drawing chances are quite, quite decent. I mean, at least it's great compared to what um, what happened in the game. In the game, he played uh, bishop d3 and won the exchange on f1. But this is a situation that is even worse than the exchange up than we looked at earlier. Here white has a pawn for the exchange as well and extremely active pieces. Note how bad the black king is. It is absolutely um, yeah, impossible here to find an absolutely safe place for this uh, <laughs> utmost important piece. Yeah, rook c8 is what Hare Krishna did. Rook e1. <clears throat> Uh, rook, c, uh, rook c6 and here already the engine gives some improvements. Yeah? White is uh, a lot better here but finding this over the board now is difficult. The strongest move seems to be queen to h5. This is preventing rook e6 because of the pinning idea. This move and white has some ideas um, to continue. Bishop g5, for example, or c5, bishop d6. White is um, a lot better here. It's, however, difficult to um, yeah to compare those um, continuations that all have may look good. And he played this move, which also looks extremely uh, um, extremely dangerous for black. There is knight f5 potentially coming. This is a tempo move, but. After rook g6, black has gained uh, a tempo as well. And after g3, takes, takes, he played king to f8. Yeah, the queen h5 earlier was probably even stronger. Even though white's position here is very, very good as well. We see that after rook d1, and now rook d2 threatening discoveries, um, there is an extremely critical position now here after rook f6 played by Hare Krishna. That was not the best defense. Rook d6 was better. But yeah, here we have a situation where <clears throat> Nepomniachtchi now could have won the game, just straight win the game, but he did not find it. He played this move and relatively quickly and he blitzed the whole game, which is uh, kind of, yeah, I mean the whole game at least up to him, um, which is kind of um, showing that maybe he was just frustrated with everything, I don't know. Uh, but knight f5 is not exactly rocket science and wins. Yeah, we can we can check a couple of lines. So what happens here with this move? First of all, the queen is attacked. If the queen takes, check. bishop h6 is the key idea. No? King e8 is a check. direct mate. Check mate. So the rook takes and we grab the queen and are, we are queen up for rook and bishop, plus a winning position. So there is no danger here at all. So what is the thing? Rook takes. But here again, check. the check 
and the check, check. is strong. Check. Only bishop d8 is playable and white wins the queen check. and this pawn. So it's queen against two rooks, but white is two pawns up and has a continuing attack. Yeah, we will win even more material as both a and f7 pawn are weak. It's a complete win. It's a bit mysterious. Knight f5 is, of course, it's the first move you check in this position. And somehow it was not played. I think it's it's really strange. Yeah, You look for the discoveries first and the lines are super simple. I mean, it's a bit weird. He played queen h5, which is still dangerous, of course. But knight f5, the game probably would have finished in a couple of moves. Okay, queen h5. It's still, again, very difficult. a6 by black, bishop g5. Check. No, and it's not fun, <laughs> not fun for black. b6, and uh, we get um, to a position again where white is probably close to winning. It's just that uh, the black position is so tough to defend. Yeah, here knight f5, again, uh, black is in huge trouble. And the next couple of moves are all very, uh, very much forced. Yeah, and now here, knight check. g7, king d7. Check. Check is the best move. Rook d6. And here again, he played this immediately. And instead, queen f6 is the end of the game. f7 will drop under much more favorable circumstances than in the game. For example, like queen c6 Check. takes, Check. takes, and then knight f5. And this is uh, unbearable for black. You know, even even endings could be could be winning. Sometimes it's tricky here because the black king is so close to the pawns, but even some endings to win here. Yeah, this is a bit better. I mean, sorry, this is a lot better than the game. In the game, we get something similar. He played this first and then went here. Check. But now black is a bit more active, especially the bishop here. Check. And here there is no clean win. The problem is a4 pawn is weak and the winning idea would be to uh, push the pawns like f and g pawn which however exposes the white king. A little bit later, we get to a position again where white could have won. And I'm not saying that Hare Krishna defended badly. The black position is just a total, a total nightmare to Check. play. So we can uh, go forward Check. a little bit Check. to that position where Check. there was an opportunity again. However, this is difficult to spot. Yeah, King G2 was played by a white player here. And instead, it seems that uh, instead of king g2, what did the engine give? That queen f3 seems to be winning. But this is um, something that is a pure computer chess. I mean, to Check. get to see a difference between all those Check. moves that look diff that look similar is, is really tough. This is the idea of the engine, pushing the pawn to g6. And it might indeed lead to a win. It's difficult to analyze this conclusively, but we can look at a line, for example, like a4, king g2. This is not forced. This is just for Check. showing uh, what, what could Check. happen. Mate. Funny idea. King b7. Check. Check. And then the f-pawn. Check. Check. And white wins. An extremely long line. Of course, not even the engine calculates uh, like quickly this far. It's just that it shows some some potential winning ideas that that there are in this that, that there are in this position. Um, it's really nothing um, to be uh, yeah, faulted for what, what uh, Nipomiachi did. White is pressing the whole time, but Check. it like Check. black is just holding Check. by yeah, just by a tempo. I mean, look at this. The A pawn is just quick enough. 
to be able here to promote. And there's an even a discover check. 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 And white check. gets this with check, but it check. doesn't it does not really add up. The black is fairly well coordinated and black always has potential um, perpetuals. So at the end, this ended in a draw. Check. Even this is not uh, Check. Check. all that easy, Check. but it ended in a draw. Check. 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 Yeah, and black's counterplay is, is too strong. Uh, super active. Huh? Checks. This is hanging. Check. And, um, Check. Here they agreed to a draw. So a very disappointing uh, result for the Russian player. Uh, I think at times he just played uh, far too quickly, it seems, and uh, yeah, lost some or, or missed some opportunities uh, to win the game. The next game I want to look at is, and if you, it's tough, it's tough to believe, but it's even was even crazier than this one. The game Andrekin with the white against Pavel Elyanov. Andrekin played the trump, something that he plays. Um, relatively often. He's got a quite a wide collection of offbeat openings and the Tromp is one of them. So, um, A6, Knight D2, H6. Yeah, and now I think um, White probably should play um, just Knight F3. This is the Tory attack. Solid opening very um, simple development, everything's okay. He played this. This in itself is not, okay, it cannot be terrible, but what I'm getting at is, black now played queen to b6, and now you have to do something with the b-pawn. And you cannot really sacrifice this at this stage. So he covered it with rook b1, and black managed to play e5. And, <clears throat> I mean, for my taste, black is already very okay here. Uh, his um, development is okay, and he's putting this uh, this big pawn in the center. So, I mean, that cannot be a great opening result. He um, just played knight e2 now, and black decided to grab space in the center, which in doubt is almost always a good idea g5, bishop g7. So black now has a considerable space advantage. However, white development is not so bad. He's got pieces um, at least um, yeah, moved away from the starting positions, but they're not very effective. It's uh, probably equalish, but in a very uneven way. Yeah, it's a very unconventional position. So they both castled. And now Andrekin started um, yeah, some active operation. I'm not sure if this is a good idea at all. Um, he went b4, trying to expand on the queen side. Knight h5, bishop d6. So he tries to transfer this bishop somehow to c5. However, we see that the bishop has no squares. It's actually kind of a self-trap. So. What happened? He went b5. Uh, sorry, he went f3. <laughs> sorry, this is the thing. He went f3 and not b5. b5 was a bit um, a bit more circumspect, but okay, the thing is f3, b6, uh, sorry, e3, b5. This is, eh, it's crazy. e3, b5. So, um, <clears throat> white is counterattacking the knight, and, uh, <laughs> and here already an interesting decision. Um, because black has a couple of options. Some um, don't lead to anything. Yeah, like taking and white takes is not, um, is nothing special. This is going to be taken probably equalish this position. Then there is what he played, which is not bad at all. And there is knight a5. And this is probably the strongest option. Just move the knight. It seems that white does not really have a great reply to that. For example, after b6, black is just going to move the queen, like here. And what is this knight doing now? It goes here, black has a great square here. He keeps this pawn. And uh, something like this, for example, it's very okay for black, yeah? Black is, of course, somewhat better 
It's hard to say how much. It's still extremely murky. Knight a5 was probably a good alternative, but Elianov plays b6. He has absolutely uh, no issue in this game to put as much oil in the fire as possible. So b6 takes and takes. So now the knight is hanging the whole time. The knight now has to do something. It went here, c4, knight c5. And uh, again, there's now an interesting choice by Aryanov. He could have just taken on c6. Simple move, very simple move. And black is fine. There's absolutely no, um, no big um, argument there. Black is fine. But Elyanov did not want to be, like, let's say, simply better. He was just playing far more ambitiously and went knight f4. Now, after rook e1, again, he could have taken, but he played bishop f8, asking a question. What are you going to do with the knight? Yeah, and this was answered with bishop a4. White is keeping this pawn. This is probably not the greatest decision. But it leads to a fantastically, fantastically complicated position. So, Elyanov now takes the knight. White recaptures. He has got a couple of c-pawns now. And knight to d3. Yeah, this is an extremely strong piece on d3. And uh, yeah, white now has little choice, actually. Yeah, you, you don't want to uh, keep this knight there and play rook f1. That's just an extremely passive move. So Andrekin decided to just give up the exchange. This is probably, objectively speaking, not all that great, but from a practical point of view, it's very understandable. So grabbed it and rook to e8. So why did an exchange down? And he has this extremely strange configuration with the c pawn and the very strong knight on d4. The big issue is actually that black has this very strong e3 pawn. If it wasn't for that pawn, I think white's compensation would be very good. But this way, the e pawn is such a such a substantial nuisance for white that he probably cannot uh, have enough compensation. Um, in the game, h4 was played. I mean, white has to get something going. Rook e7, takes, takes. Yeah, and now, um, of course, white could have played like slow moves, but, well, that's not the spirit of this position. And Andrekin went with a spectacular rook b7, simply offering another, another uh, exchange. Okay takes <laughs> and white gets a pawn to b7. The next um, move now I think is really quite mysterious because the most normal move here in this position is simply to take the pawn and return or be ready to return the exchange. But it was not played now, which is really surprising. He should probably just take the pawn and if white tries to get it back, there is not that much going on. I know it looks dangerous, but it's it's not it's not decisive in any way. Big issue again is the e pawn. It's not so easy to um, to do something with white. Like you can take here and maybe go for this uh, this attack, but something like queen to d8, which covers that, is uh, just um, keeping everything nicely coordinated for him. The next move will be e2. And white doesn't have enough. He decided not to return the exchange. I mean, not because he like, was so happy with the exchange. Probably had some something calculated that he didn't like. And he played rook b8. And now white keeps the pawn. So white is two exchanges down for these two pawns. And yeah, an extremely nice knight on d4. In a game between two humans with limited time, this position is, uh, I mean, I'm not saying that this is equal or something, but it's like anything can happen. It's, it's, it's such, a, such a messy position. Um, 
in the next moves, black is doing fine. Played this. Knight e2, the knight wants to regroup. f6 and queen to d1. Yeah, Elianov is playing this nicely now, actually. He gives up this pawn with a check, check. to get the rook on the h-file. The only mysterious thing is right here. I mean, I understand, it's little time, but here the move rook um, e to a8, which looks like the most normal move in this position, does win. He must have missed something. I'm not quite sure what. But this is um, winning the game for black. After something like f4, which is covering this, there is the key move queen to f7. Maybe he did not appreciate how strong this move is. It's uh, impossible now for white not to trade. If he plays something like that, for example, there's queen g6, and this is a decisive entry of the queen. Or alternatively, yeah. this one. Check. Check. And black wins. Check. Hmm. Yeah, this is a very long line. I mean, but you don't have to calculate everything when you play rook e to h8. It just looks more natural to me than playing rook d8. But it's, um, it's extremely tough. The funny thing is that now, in fact, if you believe the computer, and I tend to do so, because this is just pure tactics, this position, it's already a spoiled position for black, and it seems that white has enough now. I mean, those pawns are quite dangerous. This was played, and now f4. It seems that this is just about to hold white f4 rook h1 was played on queen f7 there is knight d4 and again black is not winning somehow check yeah that was played check and the white king check. is just taking a run <laughs> but there is no checkmate and at the end uh, never forget uh, for example, after a queen trade, potentially, a white might win with those pawns. So here, and bishop d1. Had to be played. It's the only move. But um, Check. if you have only... Only moves are sometimes the easiest to find. <clears throat> Knight f4. Yeah, note that this is no good. Check. Check. Because here black comes first. Check. And will win. But knight takes is good. Check. Yeah, the white king, yeah, only four, but there is no mate. There's not Check. even that many, there are not even that many checks. Check. Huh? White now is tons of material down, but look at those pawns. And white has, um, yeah, a big counter, counter ideas here to at least draw. Yeah, so he played this. Check. Check, check, and check. And after a couple check, of checks here, I check, think. Check, check, here check. Here they agree to a draw. Yeah, what a game. That was like pure chaos. Absolutely pure chaos. And uh, yeah, a draw at the end. Maybe it's it's, it's the right result, yeah, <laughs> after such a complete mess. Yeah, Elianov um, probably could have, should have, whatever, <laughs> win, won this game. But um, it was so extremely, uh, extremely weird and complicated that he did not manage uh, with little time. Yeah, I note that uh, he also had a, a winning position the round before, but struggled in the in the time in the time trouble phase. Um, okay, the, there's one more game that we could look at because, but it's extremely long. It's the game Vayi Adiban, where Vayi was better the whole game, but ultimately did not manage to win. It was a 90 plus move game that I don't want to look at because there's one more game that definitely needs to be checked, which is the game Carlsen Van Veli with white. Yeah, Carlsen Van Veli. And um, yeah, as you can probably guess, because of my early spoiler, 
this is going to be uh, not a draw. So we have a Sicilian. Van Veli is uh, sticks to his guns, but now plays the the Threveningen variation or Threveningen. Yeah, um, not too um, frequently seen nowadays because it's um, widely accepted that Black cannot equalize against the Caris attack with G4. So a bit surprising. Maybe Van Veli wanted to get in a surprise. Um, because he usually plays the knight off. Okay, g4 was played by Carlsen, h6 by Fenveli, and here white has uh, quite a substantial choice. The absolute main move is the move h4, followed by rook g1, trying to play g5 after all. Um, this is probably a bit better for white. This is what is widely accepted at least. Another option is what Carlsen played. He just played a, a normal, let's say, developing move with bishop g2. Um, in this situation, after knight c6, h3, we get to a, um, a position type that is quite well known from the knight off when white plays the move 6h3. Um, it could easily transpose if black now played bishop e7 and a6, those kind of things. Um, in the game, Fenveli played an interesting move, which is maybe not that great, but interesting. Again, g5. That looks um, a little bit weird, uh, maybe to some, because um, yeah, they're not familiar with uh, some plans in the Sicilian. The general plan is very, very um, commonly known. Black plays g5 to being able to capture and pawn on f4 and thus securing the e5 square, ideally for a knight. So this is a strategically a very ambitious idea. Uh, this is also typical uh, Van Veli. He doesn't like to play yeah, smallish maneuvering stuff. He wants to play ambitious chess. Um, White now can play in various ways, bishop e3, just develop normally, let's say, or can play what Carlsen did. Carlsen's choice is one of those uh, keep it simple decisions, but not a bad one. He took on c6 and played e5. The idea is that now um, black, well, black will probably do this and was played in the game, and now white takes. And here you see what Carlsen's idea was. White's pawn structure is just going to be a little bit better. White has two pawn islands, three pawns on each side of the board, and black is on three pawn islands. So not all that uh, great in comparison. This cannot be a fantastically big advantage, but certainly it's comfortable. And a position type, like a little bit simplified and kind of manageable, that, that Carlsen is good at. So when Willi took it with the queen, castles, bishop a6, and rook to e1. Yeah, white is more comfortable. It's just what it is. It's difficult for black to um, yeah to imagine how you can equalize. This is often a big problem. You're sitting in a position where, like here, your structure is a bit weaker and um, you don't have a clear plan how you could change this because the pawn structure is not likely going to be, the, be improved in the near future. You just have to be Stay active is the is the main thing. Um, he played bishop to e7, knight e4, queen c7, and here Carlsen found a good move. And it's a move based on a tactic. Um, always check in a game if the opponent has got unprotected pieces. And if there is more than one unprotected piece, or even three unprotected pieces, or more, then the likelihood of some tactic working is increasing a lot. And here white has a little tactic that is strong. Not like a tactic that wins the game, but c4 is a strong move. And this is based on the unprotected state of the rook on h8. If black takes, then queen d4 is a straight double attack. So c4 is a strategically very desirable move that is tactically justified by that double attack queen d4. Yeah, Vinveli moved the knight and Carlsen played b3. 
So why was c4 so um, so good for white? Because it keeps the bishop on a6 completely out of the game. The knight on b4 is uh, also, I mean, it's not a bad piece because it can exchange itself, but that leads to simplifications that white is not, uh, yeah, not unhappy about. Rook d8, queen f3, knight d3. Black had to do that basically. If you don't ex exchange the knight now, it might be stuck on um, on b4. The move knight c2 is check. reject is uh, rejected, refuted by knight f6 check. King f8 and queen c3. This is not great, yeah. And this is checkmate, and at the same time the queen is attacked. Of course, that's a bit cooperative, but it shows the dangers. Knight d3 was played, rook d1, and now <clears throat> the trades were unavoidable. So what does not change is what was happening earlier. The pawn structure is favorable for white. Queen f4, played by Van Veli. And now Carlsen decided to simplify matters. And the pawn was lost. Was there a way to avoid that for black? Here Check. he took with the bishop. If he takes with the king, Check. rook d1 is actually going to lead to a fantastic attack for white. So he only had the choice between uh, yeah being in this situation, which is probably losing like this, or going to the pawn down ending. And this is why he went for the pawn down ending. However, this is Check. clearly not much fun. The c6 pawn ultimately dropped. Um, bishop f3. And uh, let's fast forward a moment. Knight c6 is the idea, has to be stopped. And now the c pawn got moving. Rook c4, rook c8. And um, yeah, here white. Um, had to um, had to take a decision, play what he played or look for something else. Um, there is actually not, uh, yeah, I mean, you can play other moves, but c6 um, is transforming this position to a rook ending, which is probably winning. So it, um, it, it it's, it's tough to question this decision. Black might want to take and take on c5 so you have to do something concrete and you cannot easily move the knight yeah because bishop b5 is extremely annoying let's have a look what he did carlson just um, now transforms this into a rook ending takes 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 and now we got the rook ending yeah he rejected rook b7 rook b7 check and taking on a7 that would have given white two connected passes but they are relatively far back it seems that this, what he played, is um, a pretty clean technical solution. White is a pawn up. He still has the better structure. And note that this is two against one on the queen side, which is actually better than just having a passer because the passer in itself will not promote on its own accord. Here, the rook, we will see a couple of moves later. Uh, it's uh, it's a lot a lot later that this pawn sorry this a pawn is something that requires protection and this is why two against one is even even better this structure as we see here already is also um, quite likely to lead to a scenario where white might get a past h pawn so the ending is extremely bad for black maybe it's losing um, yeah when really took here and now try to activate his Check. rook, but that doesn't help at the end. Note, as I said, this is a weakness. He has to yeah, keep the rook on the fifth there and uh, yeah, some further maneuvering led to Check. the white rook entering. Check. Check. 
Yeah, and the A pawn dropped. Black couldn't really do much about this. It was an extremely bad uh, rook ending. You can probably improve the defense a little bit, but I don't think that at the end it would have would have saved Fenveli. It continued uh, some more moves, but check. Yeah, here the Dutch player resigned. So uh, round nine saw um, six draws and Carlsen winning. So he's a little bit back in the race. He has he had lost this game against Report in round eight, but with this win now, it's kind of like nothing happened. Yeah, but he's still behind Wesley. So uh, half a point. Yeah, after round nine. Yeah, it was a fun round despite the many draws. I hope you enjoyed the coverage. Thanks for watching.